Hello, my name's Roger Muller. Welcome to this presentation, which is going to be an overview on how to handle sheet goods. It's going to be my favorite workflow. And we're going to talk a little bit about transporting the goods. We're going to talk about a throwaway discardable stand that can be used as a work table for positioning them while we cut them to final dimension. We're going to cut using one of the finest systems that's out there, the Festool plunge cut saw. It's a guide rail, it's a saw that's guided by a rail and it's a non-skid rail so that as you move over the material you can do a fine job of cutting and get the accuracy, precision, etc. that you want. Lastly, we're going to talk about assembling some pieces and the finished product is going to be an L-shaped piece that is four feet long and nine and a half inches in each diameter. We're just going to do a rough joint to show you the capabilities and you'll quickly um, catch on to how this could translate into even fine furniture. Craig Jig, of course, is one of the finest bargains in a woodworking store, a step drill, a means of indexing or aligning the step drill with the jig itself, and then clamps to put things together. Here's the normal clamp that comes with it that's used for framework. We're going to talk a lot about using the right angle clamp. It has a washer on only one side and it has a neck to go into the pocket screw for aid in alignment and clamping. As far as talking about transporting materials, make sure that you do this with using a little bit of common sense. Don't try putting it on the roof of a car. Get a pickup, get a trailer, truck if you need to rent one, or have the, the lumber yard split the materials so that you can safely transport them by car. Once you get them home, where are you going to work on it? You don't want to have to drag it down into the basement to a table saw that might be down there. I've even got a panel saw that I prefer not to have to drag the materials to. I'd rather use this table that we're going to discuss in the following episode of the video where we've actually are going to start showing the table collapsed. First we're going to talk about the construction. You'll notice that the interior pieces of this are four inch plywood that's been ripped down. It's been cross lapped on it with a dado on a table saw. You could do this with a router if you had the patience to do it and then chisel it out to square it up. I chose to do it on a table saw. The end joints are just butted in and screwed with wood screws. I used uh, a polyurethane glue, Gorilla Glue, and you'll see it foamed out occasionally here to stiffen up the interior joints. Very happy with that piece of the construction. The table measures three feet by seven feet and that is very adequate for using on four by eight sheet goods. The overhang is fine. You can shuffle it and it still stays balanced. Now let's talk about the legs. On this particular one we had three quarter inch legs. I'm going to go up to at least a one inch leg on the next tables I do. You'll notice that there is a very key element here in that in the two cross members. When this folds in this cross member is angled at about 10 degrees so when it comes back it's the stop that butts up against this cross member at the top. The other one here is just for reinforcement. To cut the plywood we are going to use the Festool guide rail system. If you want to improvise your own from a lower price saw and some sort of a guide rail you can do this. I want to point out this one as I have found it to be top of the line as far as getting this accomplished. Um, one of the advantages of this system is the, uh, the guide rail, if you will, has an edge on it here that's replaceable. That actually cuts, it's, it's a foam rubber that cuts right to the guide line. There are foam strips underneath which act to keep the guide rail from slipping. Let's take a look at that slipping feature first. Notice that if I just bump it, it moves, but if I put any kind of weight on it, it's very, very stationary. Okay, I'm going to align to my pencil marks that I've already put on here at nine and a half inches. Okay, I've got my mark. I'm shooting for the inside edge. The foam rubber strip is just allowing that to show. Same way up here. I'll drop the saw onto the guide rail into the appropriate groove here. I've set the saw to cut 26 millimeters deep which will cover the thickness of the wood, it will cover the thickness of the guide rail and it actually will dig into the sacrificial table a little which, which is fine.
There I have a very nice edge on both sides. We'll now proceed to assembling these pieces with a Craig jig and show you the simplicity with which that can be done. The Craig jig, as you purchase it from a woodworking store, has got to be one of the most outstanding values for the dollars put forth. Let's expand it a little bit and think about using it as a means of attaching plywood at 90 degree angles or for that matter at 180 degree angles if you wanted to join two flat pieces of plywood. What does not come with it that I highly encourage you to buy is what's called a right angle clamp. And we're going to have two of these in action today. These are very useful when putting pieces of plywood together at a right angle. You'll notice that as opposed to the standard Craig clamp which has the washer surfaces on both sides, this one does not. Instead it has a whole a projection that fits into the pocket hole screw. With that, we'll get assembled and we'll start drilling. Okay, here you see a piece of particle board inserted into the Craig jig. You'll notice that it's clamped. The clamp was adjusted off camera for three quarter inch material. I have set my drill up, my step drill, to also be used for three quarter inch material. There's a stop on here that I'll drill down to. I insert it into the sleeve. Notice I'm at, a, at the appropriate angle. There's hole number one, drilled to the appropriate depth. I'll release the clamp. I'll slide the piece down until about right there. Notice I'm going to get this one fairly close to the end. The reason being I want the right hand clamp to, to certainly be able to reach around it. So, we're done. A couple of minutes, we've got the five holes uh, drilled, and drilled with a great deal of precision. Now, what do we do to assemble this? You notice I got the pieces set in place. I'm going to smoothen this up so there's a perfect match there. I'm going to try to get the other side here on the outside edge as perfect as possible. And I'm going to insert the neck of the clamp, snap. Now that we got our first clamp in place, I'll put a second clamp on the other end. So, I've already adjusted it in a test fit and clamp it together. The ends meet nicely here, as does the edge. Let's go ahead and stick our end one in down here first. I happen to be real flush on the back of that one. I've had my finger on the back side here and it's good and flush. While we're at it, let's put one in the very end. Loosen the clamp. I've got my finger checking everything out. Set the screw in place. I'm actually going to take this one loose. Nothing says I have to keep it since I've got it supported down there on that end. And I'm going to work in getting my warp taken out. There's my hole right there. I've got very good alignment. I'm going to put that one in. And then this last one. Again, I'm using my thumb on my left hand. Okay, we've got all our clamps off, we've assembled the piece, we had an added difficulty here because the pieces were a little warped, I'm glad that happened because it showed how that could be fixed. Let's just tip it over, take a look at what we've got. We've got the thing assembled, now where could you use this? Building cabinets, certainly. On cabinets that I've constructed using these techniques, I do not put the pocket holes on the inside. I put them on the outside, even on end cabinets and then take and drop a piece of veneer or an eighth inch skin of plywood to cover it up. In a very few minutes here, we have taken you through our workflow for handling plywood. We've talked about transporting it. We've talked about this uh, table that can be uh, thrown after a year or two that is very useful for a wide variety of purposes. We talked about the Festool plunge 
bar guided saw for cutting using the guide rail and how that doesn't slip and has a lot of neat features and accessories. And lastly, we talked about the Craig jig, which is normally considered something you use for framing. We're talking about for putting panels together. With that, thank you for being with us today. My name is Roger Muller.